What's going on, everyone? I'm just a typical, average American here today to react and learn about the best food in London for under 10 pounds, which at the time of this video right now is about 12 US dollars. So I'm sure there's many, many places in London that are very fancy, wonderful, beautiful, very extravagant places to eat with expensive food. That is not the point of this video at all. I am hoping to learn here about some awesome, relatively cheap food, you know, $12, 10 pounds. That's like not getting McDonald's <laughs> quite level of cheap, but it's certainly not expensive, especially for going for like to a major city and eating. That's not bad. So this is really, this is really a very interesting kind of sweet spot for like cheap food in London, a place I know next to nothing about basically. So this video just has a ton of cool stuff. I feel like I'm going to learn and tasty food. So, you know, what could, <laughs> what better to watch? So let's take a look. The 10 Best Cheap Eats in London. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, entertaining. In this video, I'm gonna be telling you 10 tasty places to get food for pretty cheap. What is he holding? I don't even know what he's holding right now, but it... <laughs> I feel like there's gonna be a lot of that in this video, actually. First place we're gonna start in this video is at Brindisa. It's at Borough Market. It has a chorizo sandwich that's about six oh. pounds for the double chorizo. Chorizo, arugula, spicy pepper, cooked up hot and fresh. Here we go, let's dive into it. Oh, this is food for under 10 pounds, I just realized. This is only six pounds. You get this fancy sandwich. I don't even know what a chorizo sandwich is. I feel like I should look it up. Chorizo? I'm very, oh man, I'm not very cultured at all. What is this? It's a type of pork cured meat originating from the Iberian Peninsula in Europe. I don't feel so bad now. I feel like there was a very, very small chance I was going to know that, but now I do, and looks good. <laughs> okay, now that I've had a few bites of it, it's pretty good. The roll, soft and fluffy, warmed yeah. up. The chorizo, not too spicy. I mean, it is spicy, but, and again, I'm from San Diego where we have some pretty spicy Mexican food. Right. Definitely the Spanish version of this chorizo is a little less spicy, but still a really good kick and interplay between all the ingredients. Everything's really fresh. Now, nice. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this sandwich. If you wanna know <laughs> more about Borough Market and the other food stalls here, then check out my video on Borough Market and the best markets in London. That's I actually saw that. Wow, I actually saw that video by him about the different food markets in London. Huh. It's a whole separate video to this one, which is just on cheap eats. I feel like that's gonna be a lot of the food in this video, under 10 pounds, right? A lot of these like street market vendor type foods, which are actually like sneakily low key. Actually, I think everyone kind of knows this. Some of the best food, freshest best food you can get is in these sneaky, low-key market kind of places. Although, <laughs> I don't know how sneaky this is. This is like a gigantic, well-known market in London, but you get my point. For some cheap and delicious, classically British food, check out Mother Mash. What do they specialize in? They specialize in mashed potatoes with your choice of sausage or a meat pie. Just a Oh, man. Oh, I don't know about this. I always say when they bring up the meat pies, oh, man. When in, in these British videos I watch, whenever the meat pies are brought up, I don't know what to say and think because uh, I've never had a meat pie. We don't make our pies with meat in America. I don't want to just knock it. I've just never had it, so it kind of... Disturbs me, I guess. A little under 10 pounds for each. Truly delicious. They've got about eight okay. different choices for mashed potatoes, from the traditional wow. to the bubble and squeak, which in includes peas and cabbage. Wow, oh, yeah, but I'm on board for mashed potatoes. I'm on board for that. I've never heard of anywhere having like 10, 10 different flavors of mashed potatoes. Okay. All right. I had the traditional with the Angus steak meat pie. Quite delicious, lots okay. of tender, juicy beef in there. The gravy, I had the traditional gravy. You got a lot of choices for that. You know, that doesn't look too bad. 
when he shows it like this, kind of broken open. I mean, it's just meat inside of this flaky sort of coating around it with the delicious gravy and mashed potatoes. Yeah, it's probably very good. It's just, I feel like I need to, I need to bite the bullet and like just like have some meat pie and just like get it out of the way so I can enjoy looking at it. <laughs> that too, it's pretty good and it was just under 10 pounds. If you wanna be adventurous and classically British, add a side of mushy peas for about 165 mushy. and it is London, so get a- Mushy peas, this is perfect because I just watched a video like a few days ago explaining exactly what mushy peas were. I did not know what mushy peas were till very recently. Wow, this is perfect. This is the knowledge came in the correct order for me. Mushy peas kind of has like mint flavor, right? If I remember. A pride of London beer too. That'll push you over the 10 pound limit. But hey, you know, when in Rome or in this case, when in London. Yeah. For some of the best and cheapest fish and chips in London, check out the laughing halibut. It's fish and chips. I love that he's uh. He's actually managing to get like a lot of the just British sort of staples. Fish and chips, the meat pies. Wow, there's probably gonna be even more. This is, this is a good list so far. And like some of these things are like six pounds, this one's seven pounds. These are very affordable meals. It's located in Westminster, just a few blocks behind Westminster Abbey. If you get the fish and chips to go, it's seven pounds. It's a huge okay. piece of cod, delicious chips or French fries as they might be known. Uh, if right. you eat in, it's gonna cost a little more, it's 10.50, but you can also get the mushy peas. Why does it cost more to eat in? I've never really heard of that costing more to eat there at the establishment. Why would that be? Huh. And there's more, uh, <laughs> more mushy peas, too. Which are a British specialty. Uh, I had a ginger beer to drink with it as well. No alcohol oh. served here. But the fish, very fresh, very flaky. It's a huge piece. Between the fish and the chips, I could not finish it all. It's almost a meal for two. I'm Wow. Yeah, the fish, uh... I've nothing against fish or meat pies, but it's just not stuff that we really eat in America. I mean, I I should clarify, lots of people in America do eat fish, but it's nowhere close to common. Like there's no no classic American dish that has fish that I can think of. Unlo but in in Britain there's there's fish and chips, literally a dish around it. That's kind of my point. So I don't know what to think of the fish and chips, although it looks good, I can say that. I'm usually skeptical of places that claim they're the best of anything, but this place <laughs> is pretty good. And you know okay. it's authentic because on the table are the traditional British compliments. You got ketchup for the chips, you got mayonnaise, you got tartar sauce, you got brown sauce. Oh my god, what? And I just, I just, just learned about brown sauce. This is perfect. I, I understand kind of what's going on here. Have some brown sauce with your, your fish and chips. That's only seven pounds. This is great. And you've got malt vinegar. The next cheap eat on this list, it's also in my weird things to do list because it's kind of weird. It's in this church, the St. Martin in the Fields Church, which is oh. at Trafalgar Square. But in this little rotunda right here, they've got a cafe in the crypt. Oh. Yes, you can- Whoa. Wow, this is awesome. And kind of scary. <laughs> <laughs> Cafe in the crypt. Is that literally what it's called? And what is, what do you eat in the in the crypt? Dare I ask? have lunch in the crypt of this church. It's kind of like a cafeteria <laughs> style. You pick up your tray, you go down the line, they have okay. daily specials, fish and chips for less than 10 pounds. Okay. And today I had the soup and the apple crumble seven pounds. Pretty cheap, good deal, huh. pretty filling, so. Apple crumble, what does that mean? I think there's gonna be a lot of Googling in this uh, particular episode. Crumble, apple crumble? What is a crumble? Oh boy. It's a uh, apple crumble, apple crumble. Includes, the crumble topping includes oats and nuts. Apple crumble, is it like a pudding with a crumbly topping? Okay, I'm not sure I exactly understand. I'm looking at this photo of it here. 
apple flavored something and it's crumbly on top, basically. <laughs> I think I just totally failed at understanding what the apple crumble is. Do check this out right at Trafalgar Square and to go in the cafe in the crypt, find this little glass dome that says crypt and head on down there. Oh, Popular place for lunch. So if you've been is, in lunch. That is really cool. And it's got like this entrance. <laughs> you enter this glass box and get lowered into the crypt to have lunch. That's actually sounds very fun. And for a little while and you're tired of fish and chips and meat pies, well check out Roti King. It's Malaysian and Singapore style street foods. Oh. It's located just behind Euston Station. It's one block in the back. You'll find it. It's got this yellow sign and you'll know you're in the nice. right place because, well, it's got a staircase that often has a line going down it. Oh. Some of the best deals they have are at lunchtime where they've got lunch specials for five for six pounds. Uh, but what you really want to come here for is the roti. Roti is a Malaysian style of flatbread that's popular in Malaysia and Singapore really? for five pounds you can get the roti I've never heard of roti and there are I've never encountered a Malaysian establishment in America ever this is actually awesome with some curry that you can dip it into you'll see him cooking the roti up fresh for a little more you oh, can get wow. it with fillings uh, I also really like their noodles the mee goreng noodles oh this looks so good Oh my gosh. If this is anywhere near five pounds, six pounds, this looks really good. Super delicious, super fresh, spicy, savory. Uh, I had shrimp and chicken that was quite plentiful. I was quite full. The noodles were a meal in and of itself. And their other drink specialty is tea huh. tarek, which is a pulled tea. You can get it hot or cold. That's kind of cool. Like this is a uh, Malaysian dish, like, that's one of the cool things about going to London, I guess, is a lot of the street market food is, like, international, like this. It's British food everywhere, but also lots of other nationalities, too, for cheap and good as well. For a whole neighborhood full of cheap and tasty eats, check out London's Chinatown. Just a couple blocks from okay. Piccadilly Circus. You can't miss it because it's got the red Chinese lanterns. There's also a Chinese gate over here. Lots of cheap noodles. Yeah, Americans are not familiar with the Malaysian food, but Americans are obsessed with Chinese food. For sure. Buns, it's only a couple blocks, but it's a lot of cheap eats packed into a small neighborhood. Okay. And if the Red Lanterns didn't give it away, you'll also know you're in the right place because you'll find ducks hanging in restaurant windows. Yeah, yeah that's, uh, that is not something you'll ever find in America, is dead animals hanging in the window. Um, it's just, like... <laughs> I don't know why, but America has pretty much deemed it inappropriate to to show, like, dead meat hanging publicly, even though we're all eating it. It's kind of funny when you think about it. I'll take them all. <laughs> if you're not craving Chinese, but you want some Japanese instead, stop by Ipudo for some of London's best ramen. It's a chain oh. direct from Japan. You can get their base tonkatsu noodles for... Oh my gosh, there's a freaking, uh authentic ramen shop in London as well. You really can get like a little taste of everything around the world in London. But I mean, from what I've seen, for a good price, this one's uh, 8.9 pounds. I've never had authentic ramen in my life. I, I would have thought I'd have to go to Japan or something, but no, you can just go to London. Eight pounds, 90 pence. And for the most authentic ramen eating experience, have a seat at the noodle bar where you can see huh. those noodles cooking up in the back. You can yeah. see the steam coming yeah. off. Yeah, yeah, now yeah. that we've covered all the independent cheap eats in London, let's move on to some of the cheap eat chains. These, okay. while maybe not getting as much press in like cheap eats things and time out, they are still good, cheap, but the Londoners might already know what they are. But if you're traveling here, you might not. My favorite cheap eat chain is called Pret. They do I actually thought all of the uh, foods on this list were going to be like market, street market, independent stall type of mom and pop shops. But uh, this is a chain and it's only $2.99. Pret a manger? What did he say? If you're traveling here, you might not. My favorite cheap eat chain is called Pret. They do prepared sandwiches, some of the best prepared sandwiches ever. I love their club sandwich. The soups are pretty good too. Oh, and take my tip, get the carrot cake. 
I don't know what I think of this. This is a little... This is a little corporatized. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't want to act like this food is like a sellout or something, but this somehow lacks the, like, the beauty and authenticity of the street market foods. This, like, prepackaged sandwiches that look like they're from a gas station or something, but I'll, I would try it. It's only two ninety nine as well. I mean, I guess it looks good. It's just looks a little, like little like uh in not as fun and fresh and authentic as the others soups are pretty good too oh and take my tip get the carrot cake for dessert you'll enjoy okay. it the next okay. cheap eat chain on the list interestingly enough is called eat there's a ton of these throughout london it's pretty huh. similar to pret in that they have a bunch of prepared sandwiches but what eat has that pret doesn't is more hot foods in oh wow so there's a Quite a few places just like this around London, huh? Seven, 25 pounds. The other, you got a sandwich for like $2.99. That's gonna be hard to beat. I wonder how good these actually are. They just really remind me of sandwiches you buy at an American gas station, which are famously not good, uh, to, <laughs> to say the least. Particular meat pies. I had a chicken and oh. mushroom meat pie with mashed potatoes. And you can get a meat pie and mash here at Eat. The place is called Eat. Good mood food. Okay. Seven pounds, 25 pence. Pretty good deal. Pretty filling. Pretty okay. tasty. The mashed potato is definitely real mashed potato. So check out Eat. Uh, also okay. right next to Eat. This looks, this looks decent. Like this looks reasonable. Tasty. I'm sure, I'm sure it's fine. I'm sure it's fine. Here next on the list is Yo Sushi. Yo Sushi has a lot of locations in London. They specialize in rotating sushi, goes oh. around on a conveyor belt. <gasps> the price depends upon- Oh my gosh, it's one of those restaurants with the, uh, the conveyor belt, where the, the food goes around on the conveyor belt. That's another thing I thought you had to go, like, <laughs> to Tokyo or something to actually experience. That's awesome that London has these kind of more authentic international places that are fun. I mean, your, your sushi's on a conveyor belt for crying out loud. I don't even care if it's terrible at that point. If it tastes terrible, it's just cool. On which one you get, but they'll run you between two to six pounds, depending upon the color of the plate. Okay. For some cheap and tasty pizza and pasta, stop oh. by Vapiano's. This may sound strange, but it's a German-owned Italian chain, but the ah. pizzas and pastas are pretty good. The salami... He's right, I've never heard of that. A German-owned Italian chain. It is pizza, so the Italian makes sense. German-owned, I'm sure it's good. Eight pounds. I'd get one. <laughs> I mean, Americans are obsessed with pizza, and I'm definitely one of those Americans who's obsessed with pizza. A pizza about eight pounds. It's a big pizza. My hand is in there for scale. You can see it is okay. a meal in and of itself. They've okay. got plenty of pastas too. They cook them up fresh. Basically, when you go in, you get a card that you order from. You stand in line, you order, they give you a buzzer, and then you pick up your food when it's ready. So Yeah, that looks good. I mean, I always kind of say this, but... uh it's kind of hard to screw up a pizza, you know? <laughs> it's kind of hard to make a bad pizza, so I assume this is quite tasty as well. Check out Vapiano's. If you're craving a burger, skip McDonald's or Burger King, <laughs> head on over to Five Guys. The Five Guys. Five Guys made this list. Five Guys uh, exists in America, and uh, I don't really think of it as being cheap, though. How much does it cost in London? American chain that originally started in Washington. Or skip McDonald's or Burger King, head on over to Five Guys. The American chain that originally started in Washington, D.C. has expanded all over London. They have like 15 or 20 locations. You'll find them all over the cheap. I mean, they are known for having very fresh, very good burgers. Very good burgers. I will agree with that. Cheeseburger, uh, the little cheeseburger is 850 Great British Pounds. Okay. It's pretty good. Uh, fresh fries. You'll see the potatoes in the store, and they'll always tell you where the potatoes came from. In the U.S., huh. they often come from Idaho, but here they definitely come from England. Okay. In addition to Five Guys, the New York originated Shake Shack has opened a few huh. locations in London. One of them here is in Covent Garden. Wow, I, uh... <laughs> I did not expect, like, literal American 
food chains to make an appearance in this London Cheap Eats video. But uh, I'll take it. It's kind of like a compliment, I guess. You can get the Double Shack Burger for eight seventy-five, And I think it's a pretty big debate. What's better, the Shake Shack Burger or the Five Guys Burger? Well, you can eat both <laughs> and let me know. Okay, you know, I, now the more I think about it, there's no way as an American, if you go to London, England, all the way from America, you better not, you better not get Shake Shack or Five Guys. That is just, that is just robbing yourself. You better go to one of those authentic London street markets or something, because, yeah, that would just be blasphemy to, to not take all of the opportunity you have being in London, having, like, the authentic London food. Don't get the stuff that you can literally get whenever you want back in America. Chipotle has opened up a couple locations oh in London. God. If you've had it in America, well, you might <laughs> not need to have it here. But if you haven't, they make really good custom-made burritos for just about right. seven pounds. Yeah, the Chipotle is all over America as well. Another Asian fast food chain is called Itsu. It's by oh. the people who originally built Pret. You can get Asian salads, sushi, and rice bowls. Okay. Quick serve, in and out. Okay. For some Portuguese rotisserie chicken, stop by Nando's, another chain that has a lot of locations in London. Here you can get a quarter chicken with some sides, seven pound, 45 pence. Thank that looks amazing. Hold up, hold the phone. I've never even heard of pork Portuguese food, ever, but it looks fantastic. Like rotisserie kind of chicken and some rice, some sides. This looks good. There's a lot of cheap stuff in London, like surprisingly cheap in London, because I do view London as, I would think it'd be very expensive, kind of like New York City. Uh, but that being said, then if you go to like the street, the carts in New York City, you can get like pizza and all that for pretty cheap. You, ju you just gotta look in the right places. So same thing for London. That makes sense. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe for new videos every week or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus. Subscribe, click on this yellow ball right here. Or okay, <laughs> that is it. Uh, this video was by Yellow Productions, by the way. This was very good. I gotta give that a like. That was very enjoyable. Yeah, like I was saying, when I think of going to London, I would think like, oh, this is going to cost a fortune, and especially the food. You don't have to go out to some fancy restaurant. A lot of these uh, more street market, independent uh, style places in London looked delicious, looked amazing. And it's almost like authentic in a way. Although then, you know, here and there you want to go to some fancy schmance London restaurant to get that experience of London. So this is good. Seeing this side of it, the cheap food for under 10 pounds in London. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. And it, uh, a lot of these actually looked good. Uh, some of it, I just got to wrap my mind around, namely the meat pies. Uh, <laughs> anyway, this, I enjoyed this. If you enjoyed this as well, feel free to give this video a like or leave a comment. And if you're interested in more videos like this, me, reacting to the UK, stuff in the UK, Britain, that I've never seen before, feel free to subscribe for more. And until then, thanks for watching, and see you next time.